<laughs> and somehow they left the uh, uh, how the club works <laughs> up here. <laughs> God. Fuck, I'm getting ripped off like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm making a fucking fortune. Anyway. Uh, but on this paper, I got my own fucking chair with words on it. And I wrote jokes, uh, you know, so I have new jokes. Because fuck old jokes. What the fuck are they? <laughs> Ah, ha, 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 ha. Sorry, I shouldn't have said. I shouldn't have said. Ah, like at the beginning, right? So, that makes sense, man. Right? Uh, sorry, it's good beer. I said, God damn, huh? <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't swear like that, you know? I'm trying to be a good person, but I'm swearing. You're still working. I try not to do bad things. You know what I mean? That's my. my well, I guess everybody probably like that. Even people that do bad things probably think they are. I guess I Bill Cosby, he it didn't look like he knew he did anything. <laughs> you know, you know, like, <laughs> Sometimes people are going to me, you ever think he'll perform again? But I think he might. I think they assume, will he perform and talk about raping ladies? That I don't think he'll ever do, because he's a very clean comedian. <laughs> and his act would never touch on such vile fucking <laughs> subject material. <laughs> but he could be just like, I go into the courtroom, and I'm sitting beside Camille now. <laughs> The man says, we are ready to begin the United States of America versus Bill Cosby. I said, this is not going well, Camille. <laughs> then the prosecuting attorney shows a bunch of papers on which ladies' name and there's a hundred and forty-eight ladies. <laughs> and Camille says, that's only the A's. <laughs> I said, this is not going well. <laughs> My lawyer told me, the longer the jury is retired, the better it is for you. So, the jury goes to retire. I go to take a sip from my drink before the glass has touched my lips. The jury is back. I said, this is not going well. Come here, what if I saw that to him? Oh, now look good on my resume. I opened for him, uh, Cosby, and goddamn, I had the greatest Bill Cosby story ever, and now it's not in the top 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell it to people, because you're not going to believe this. Bill Cosby, did he rape you? No, I just forget about it, forget it. It's not that, not as good a story as I thought. <laughs> I was just in Las Vegas, and uh, this legalized sports betting has happened, which will destroy me. <laughs> but whatever, you know, at least, <clears throat> at least I know, you don't know, these people don't know. So, uh, but I was in Las Vegas, and uh, I realized I was going down in the elevator. You know, a lot of people will go to Las Vegas, and they'll, they'll come there, they'll have a system, you know, a system to beat the casino. And believe it or not, some of these systems actually don't work. <laughs> so, I'm in the elevator and I feel like I'm in on watching a flawed system, a system that's been broken because beside me in the elevator is a man and his wife and the man turns to his wife and says, I don't give a fuck what I said, give me the money. <laughs> and that's my money, I work hard for it. Get your system. <laughs> 
My new system is I bet all the money again on one, and then I'll go back to the old system. <laughs> but then I go down, let's show you how much of a fucking retard I, down center person I am. I go to the floor of the casino, and there's roulette. Now, I, I don't know anything about roulette, and I guess I do. I guess I know everything about roulette. What the fuck is there to know? <laughs> But, um, so there's the roulette. So I said, well, I'll bet $200 on, on red, you know? So I put my $200 on red, and then the little uh, wheel turns and turns and spins and the little um, silver ball finally lands. I bet on red, it lands on black. And I say really loud, fuck, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna bet. <laughs> I gotta go with my first instincts. I'm overthinking this shit. Of course, black. And everyone understood me at the table. Like, ah, yeah, fuck. Of course, man. What the fuck do you think was gonna go with red? That was gonna be red? What's wrong with that? So I flew from uh, Las Vegas and. Uh, there was an announcement, I guess I don't listen to the announcements that closely, because uh, I've asked since, I go, you ever hear this announcement? Go, oh yeah, yeah. But I guess they, I, they just block, block, I block them out. But there was a, a new one that I hadn't heard where it says if the, uh, if the oxygen masks come down, make sure to put your mask on first before your child. And I was like, God damn, that was my plan. What the fuck is blabbing out to <laughs> <laughs> but I was getting, I try and get that seat with the, the exit row seat. And, uh, you know, you just have to lie, you know, because the lady come by and go, listen, now you got the, the exit row seats. So are you would be willing then if there was, if the plane were to crash, you know, to help people out and everything? And then I'm like, all right, sure, yeah. <laughs> extra room land and shit, you know? It's a price for everything. I will be the last guy. After I help the captain out, then it'll be the <laughs> But in real life, I know I'd be scrambling on that way and fucking and kicking my mother back. Yeah, you fucking whore! You had a long life, let me get out of here. I got shit to do. I mean, thin shit I haven't finished. You don't want to die in the middle of a binge watching something. That'd be the fucking worst. <laughs> I guess it'd be worse. <laughs> uh. Also, when you're you know when you're next to that exit, it's called an exit window. Yet, when a plane crashes at whatever fucking thousand miles an hour into pavement, <laughs> the location of that window would probably change. <laughs> try to make a sound. <laughs> plane crashes, you're fucked, and it's over. You're just a plane load of stuff, and that's all it is. Everything's reduced to stuff at that point. And uh, they got a whole plane load of stuff, they go, we gotta get that stuff to fuck out the plane. And, uh, but then, uh, uh, you know, your relatives are there, and they go, can we have the stuff, the remains? And you're like, ah, the, yeah, we want it. I don't think I would want the remains of my son. I don't think that would help me at all in the grieving process. But, oh, yeah. It's all closed now. And look at this bag of remains. That's helped a lot. <laughs> And it's not like you're getting the remains, you know. They're not, it's not like they're going, here, uh, hey, doesn't that look like a lock of Brenda Johnson's hair? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, put that over there. I mean, they don't just reconstruct <laughs> everyone. <laughs> they just find your ID, go, look at this, Norm. Guy, a fellow named Norm, weighed 200 pounds. 
Oh. All right, stuff, stuff uh, 200 pounds of stuff into a bag. <laughs> Charlie, shovel 200 pounds of stuff into a bag. Would you? Are you busy right now? Yeah, shovel. Put Norm on the side of that bag. Will you give that to Norm's mother? She wants, she wants to see it. And, uh, And my mother goes, oh, there it is, look at that. I realize the norm had three eyeballs. That's right. Oh, well. And I guess we never really knew him in the first place. <laughs> Ultimately unknowable. Come on, closure. <laughs> Sometimes you get old, you think of death. It's not good, but you know. Hey, how great were, uh, were Devin and uh, Chase, the two of Yeah! They're young. They're young, man. I don't give a fuck about death. They don't even think they're going to die. I remember when I was a kid, I didn't know what that. Especially when you're a young kid. One time I got hit in the face by a puck. Yeah, the Knights just scored and it's a 2-1 Washington. A puck hit me in the fucking face and knocked my tooth out. And do uh, you know what happened? Another tooth grew in. <laughs> so it was at that point I realized, I'm, I'm not dying. <laughs> I don't even know why people do that because... <laughs> but then you get older and then things suddenly you start fucking checking yourself all the time and shit. Like my doctor says, I'm a hypochondriac. I'm not a hypochondriac, I'm just, the only thing you can do for yourself is early detection. That's all, you're not a fucking doctor. So all you can do is go in if there's something wrong. And so this fucker thinks I'm a hypochondriac. And I'll tell you what I think it stems back to. One time I had a pass. <laughs> Some fucker smeared my path. <laughs> I'll never get cervical cancer. <laughs> but no, that didn't happen. I was just making a thing. Saying something that wasn't true. But sometimes I'll say stuff that's not true. But here's why I don't like the, the doctors, the MDs. Because you go in and... Uh, you know, I get worried all the time and shit. And, cause I'm of an age where, like for instance, not a day goes by that I don't check the status of my left arm. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of my days think, well, what the fuck is going on there? Feels a little bit weird. Maybe I'll phone 911, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck? You're like, my arm hurts. My left arm, it's my left, okay, well, same to you, fella. <laughs> you gotta phone them after you have the massive heart attack, you know? You're like, yeah, remember me? We <laughs> used to have half the arm, the left arm? Yeah, well, I was right. <laughs> yes, I'm using my last few moments on earth to say you killed me. <laughs> But I don't like regular doctors because you know all they do is send you to specialists. Like why can't I? If my foot hurts, how come I can't go to a fucking foot doctor? You know what I mean? Oh God, hey, is this the foot doctor? Yeah. Listen, my foot hurts. Can I get a a, a, a doc? You see it? You want your foot doctors? You gotta go to a regular doctor. What's he gonna do? Well, he'll send you over here. <laughs> Well, it costs $80, and you gotta give $80 to him. And what, do they, what does a regular doctor ever even do? They take your blood pressure. I've had my blood pressure taken probably 10,000 times. You know, and you never get worried or anything. You know, it feels fun because you, you know, feel like Superman on one arm or something. But, and then the guy's like, wow, well, you're 140 over five. <laughs> he goes, is that good? They go, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't Now I'm going to strike your knee with a hammer. What do you think about that? <laughs> From the cartoons? You're still doing that shit? <laughs> what does that ever fucking prove? Has it helped anybody? 
they hit your knee with a hammer. They go, ah, my knee! And then the guy's like, excellent. Yes. Exactly how you should react when someone hits you in the knee with a hammer. You just pay Janice over there. $80. What about when they, they just use their smartness to trick you, you know? Because they know bigger words than you and shit. So one night when I go, God damn, Doc, I don't know, man. I got something where I'm always tired. And the guy's like, Sally, you got chronic fatigue syndrome. God damn. Go, He's like, well, chronic means always. And, uh, fatigue means you get tired. And, uh, syndrome uh, means uh, something you got. <laughs> anyway, so eighty dollars. I like how they check for cancer. You heard that? They go, ah, oh, here you go. Just poke your belly for a few minutes. As if cancer is that stupid, it's gonna fucking hide like a quarter of a centimeter under your fucking belly. Cancer hides where everything hides, up your ass. <laughs> That's where rare jewels go to hide. That's where expensive narcotics go to hide. That's where cancer goes to hide, because they all think, well, nobody's got to look at my guy's fucking ass. There's no ass doctor. Well, it turns out there is ass doctor. Thank God for them. And at first, you know, I was a little suspicious, yeah, about the ass doctor, I'll say that when I first went, because I, because I know there's that time in medical school where you have to choose your, you know, specialty. And I said, you know, and so the doc, the head doctor's like, all right, listen to me, doctor students, and I will tell you, there's many things you can do, doctor. I guess we'll start with the top. Hey, how about a brain surgery? Can you imagine that, huh? Imagine, imagine having, I mean, that's a synonym for intelligence itself. People go, what's that guy? Boy, the brain surgeon, you know? And then you the brain is the central neuropathic. Well, what is it, Fred? Yes, I wanted to ask a question about the brain surgery. Yeah, yeah, what, what is it? Uh, you get to look in a guy's ass? <laughs> <laughs> There's a heart surgeon. Oh, hey, how about the heart? For years, poets have made it akin to the very soul. So, imagine the godlike feeling you will have, student doctors, when you when you take a man's heart, still beating in your hands, and are able to. What is it, Fred? Yeah, I was thinking about doing the heart thing. When you, let's say you take the heart out, is that before or after you look up the guy's asshole? What's wrong with you, Fred? It's always like this with you. And meanwhile, Fred's a fucking pioneer. <laughs> My shin got so fucking itchy. So the first thing I thought, I got shin cancer. I just thought that in my head. I had to go later and go itchy. That's the problem too. Anything you type, any symptom is symptomatic of everything. Because it could be a common cold, could be uh, uh, death. <laughs> death is always the last one. You're like, oh. What about those ads that, I mean, God, poor, poor fucking pharmaceuticals, they put all the side effects. So they're trying to make a happy, like, thing. I mean, when I was like, you know, it's for flaky skin. I mean, you know, ah, your cock could fall off. They're just trying to slip it in underneath. Most retarded Down syndrome, one of all, is it'll say, like, uh, uh, Indracol. You know, do not use if you have this, this and, and, uh, one, and do not use if you are allergic to Indocrol. You're like, what? <laughs> you have to write that down? Forgot 
you mentioned that to the doc when you got the end of crowd? Because I take two of these a day, I know you're all right. Uh, oh, fuck, I feel red and hot. Feels like fucking like I took into crawl or something. <laughs> what the fuck happened here? That's a guy. <laughs> I had a, did you ever have a, uh, uh, what do you call those things when I put a camera up your asshole? <laughs> Not amateur pornography, but <laughs> colonoscopy, yes. I had a colonoscopy. This is what happened. This is a fucking true thing. They put you on what's called a twilight drug. I'm sniffing, and I almost think when I'm sniffing, people think I'm on cocaine. <laughs> and I get so, but I sniff from nerves and shit, and I'm not on cocaine. <laughs> I, my, I'm so old, my drugs now, I, I have Red Bull, I have coffee, a uh, fistful of LSD before I go to sleep. <laughs> no big deal. Relaxes me, you know? <laughs> I went to a psychiatrist, guy's like, uh, what a broken fucking record this guy's. He's like, stop taking the fistfuls of LSD before every show. I'm like, why am I paying you? <laughs> fucking broken record. <laughs> and he's some big expert, you should see this guy. He's a big purple dog with a green tongue. <laughs> and he's the expert. Because he's read all those fucking melting books that are behind him. <laughs> But no, I had the, uh, the colonoscopy, and they put you on a thing called Twilight Drug because you're still conscious. They need to talk to you and ask you questions and shit. So, I get under it, and then you worry, is it truth serum or some shit? Because, you know, you see a black nurse, you're like, holy fuck. <laughs> like, because you don't know what you fucking think in your crazy fucking brain. <laughs> Way deep down in the other seven button, whatever the fuck that is. I learned all about that shit because my friend was a psychiatrist too. He goes, Norm, you know you got your brain, right? I go, yeah. He goes, but you also got one behind it. Subconsciousness, unconscious sub. Yeah, it's the real thing. Like the shit you really think, that's nothing. It's this thing behind it that trigger you. Uh, like, for instance, one time I'm having a glass of milk with this fucking guy at dinner. He goes, you know why you're drinking that milk, right? I said, it's not because I like milk, right? <laughs> He's like, no, no, that's not it. He's like, it's because subconsciously you uh, miss sucking your mother's breast. <laughs> I mean, you guys have never seen my mother, but it's not it. <laughs> It's the farthest place from any part of my fucking brain. <laughs> and then it came time for him to order. You know what this guy orders? A banana and two meatballs. Now I decided. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wasn't even on the menu. He had a fucking special order. <laughs> Unconsciousness and shit. <laughs> but you hear about people having recovered memories, having a friend of mine, you know, it just comes back to you. All of a sudden, you remember something from your childhood, you know? And it's never anything good. It's not, you know, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, I used to like peach pie. <laughs> I like that. I don't like it now. But... What the fuck did that happen? It's always the most sexual, violent, horrific experience, you know? And this is what I don't like about it. Like, I can say to you, hey, my uncle never fucked me in the ass. But I can't say it with any certainty at all because, because there's two options. One, my uncle never fucked me in the ass. Two, my, my uncle did fuck me in the ass, but I forgot all about it. <laughs> so the real answer is 50-50. <laughs> if I understand arithmetic correctly, 50-50 I got fucked with that. <laughs> but I would like to keep, if 
before I do have that, if that actually happened to me, and I'm somehow repressing it, I would like to repress it right to the grave. <laughs> Never recover that particular memory. Because I don't know how to, tough enough to go fucking through life, you know what I mean? Yeah, without having to be like, you know, <laughs> tough enough to be like that. <laughs> but you know, I don't want to be like, hey Bill, let's go get a cheese sandwich. All right, man, go down to the cheese sandwich store. What kind of cheese sandwich you get? They don't have one. Oh yeah, but still, what about the bread? I think I'll get seven grain, I'm on a diet. Oh really? Because I'm just going to go over. <laughs> so what's the matter, Norm, huh? No, it's just, uh, I just remember something. From the age of seven until twelve, my uncle fucked my ass every night. I don't want no cheese sandwich no more. I had to go live my life. I got this uh, uh, colonoscopy, so it was, uh, <laughs> they put a, a, cam a huge camera up your ass, and you're frightened. Now, let me explain something to you, to guys who've never had any big thing up their ass. It's nothing. Like, I must be really afraid of prison now, man. I'll cheat up my tax, I'll give a goddamn. Now. I go to prison, I go, I'm going to be fucking in the ass. Yeah, 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 but I'm not really afraid, I'm sure. Oh, well, that's your cock. Well, it's huge, huh? I don't know if I'll be able to handle that. Got a fucking bell and howl up my fucking ass. But anyways, this is what happened, because I was going sort of in and out of consciousness, right? I, was, I think it's like a date rape drug kind of thing, man. Out a little bit, you're in, right? And you have little glimpses and shit. But I remember I was looking over because there's a camera. You're watching a movie of your ass, the inside of your ass. It's a fascinating film. You know, on enough Twilight uh, drugs. Normally it would probably, you know, be kind of long, drawn out. But when you're on these Twilight drugs, you're like, hey, there's my fucking ass. How about that? From inside of my ass. Finally got on the TV. <laughs> so, um, you're proud and inside of your ass. <laughs> so then, at the end, the guy, I heard the guy go, oh, we're almost done. And then, at the end, it went, tum, 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 like a computer or something, right? like, or not, it was a computer, right? it was on the screen, it was, tum, tum, and it goes, uh, attending nurse, Doop. Her name, another attending nurse, doop, her name. Um, attending black nurse, doop, her name. Um, it says like an anesthesiologist, doop, the name. And then finally the doctor. So I say, I go, oh, it must be all almost over. There's the credits. <laughs> nothing, no, no laugh at all. So now I'm hurt because this drug makes your emotions very close to the surface. So I repeat the fucking joke. Still nothing. So in my head I go, these motherfuckers, I go, maybe that's a hacky joke that everybody fucking says, probably. But still, be polite. You know, you have a polite laugh. Be stone cold sound. So then I go, I leave, they put me in my room, and then finally you, you awaken. And there's an orderly there, and uh, the first thing he should be saying is, do I have cancer that will kill me? But instead, I'm like, what about that joke? <laughs> Cocksucker, the fucking desert. That's an alright joke, wasn't it? So he goes, what joke? I go, at the end, when they put the thing, and I said, you know, that must be the credits. And he said, you didn't say that. You said, <laughs> I said, oh, I thought I... I didn't know I said that. So then, it made me think that that's what uh, people that are, are, are mentally ill have. That's what uh, paranoid schizophrenics have. That's what psychotic people have. 
So homeless people who are, who are for the most part, paranoid schizophrenic, you know when they're going, ah, no, they're probably saying some el eloquent shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't know why you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's a dollar, guys. Like, but I just told you that. What? <laughs> or you give me a dollar. I just told you the greatest opening move in chess. <laughs> that's not what you hear. You're ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm trying to be better with the homeless people, you know, because. Uh, like, I, I used to make jokes about homeless people. Like, why the fuck am I making jokes about homeless people? Like, the difference between me and a homeless person is so close. <laughs> you know what I'm, I mean? Like, first of all, it'd just be a splash in your brain and you're fucked. You know, a little chemical and your paranoid schizophrenic. And I have nothing to do with that. But I got a homeless guy who lived next door to me, right? Not he got, he doesn't have a door, but I mean, <laughs> I have an apartment and he has a pavement. <laughs> So, this is what I always used to do, just pretend he didn't exist. So, I'd just walk out and pass him and he'd go, that was very polite, only polite people in the world. Sir, sir, excuse me, uh, boss, sir, chief, you know. Can I bother you for a dollar? I'm not fine, I don't got no fucking dollar. And then dollars fall out of my body. And I was like, what about those? Hey, fucking, just, they're my fucking cheese sandwich dollar. Just fuck, shut the fuck up. How about that? You shut up. Why don't you get a fucking job anyway? You ever think of that? Kind of bum. What kind of jobs the guy gonna get? You know, you gotta remember these guys live. First of all, they, they're horizontal all the time. Like you know, you're vertical. You got a magic phone. You forget all the shit you got. He is horizontal on cement pavement. There's no not a lot of calling for him in the job market. Why don't you get a fucking job? I just read in the paper that down at City Hall they're looking for guys who shit and piss their pants all the time and <laughs> scream about Spiro Agnew at the top of their lungs. You'd be perfect, I tell you. So anyways, I started feeling bad because I'd go with my friend, I'd walk by the homeless guy, I'd, I'd hear him. But I pretend I did, and I'd be like, excuse me, sir, desperately need. And I'd be like, anyways, cheese sandwich, blah, blah, blah. And they see the thing on the computer with the thing. Ah, I'd talk as loud as I could. So I wouldn't hear this other human beings, you know, plead. And I thought, something wrong with this. Now, my brother's a par paranoid schizophrenic, so I understand a little bit about mental illness. Now, mental illness can only be aggravated and sometimes brought on by lack of... Um, touch, physical human touch. So we, you're always touching yourself to comfort yourself, you know, and you need other people to touch you in order that you know that you exist, you know, that you are a corporeal thing in, in existence. This guy, he doesn't fucking know. So I thought, I'm gonna hug every homeless person. And that worked for the first homeless guy. <laughs> And uh, then a uh, fucking stench is unbearable, he takes a swing at me, I'm like, okay, forget that, forget that plan. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't mean to sexually harass you or whatever I just did. But I decided, this is what I'll do, I'll just bring $20 bills in my, or $100 bills, whatever the fuck I have, and I'll just give it to whatever homeless guy I see, because you don't see that many homeless guys. It's not, it's not a big thing, it's not even a thing I'm doing for them, it's a thing because I don't let that evil fucking shit coming in my belly. <laughs> so it's, it's well worth it. At the end of my life, I'll be down six grand or something. <laughs> and they're all surprised and happy, you know, and that, that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. Now my mother, she said, you don't give him money. I said, why you shouldn't I give him money? She said, you don't know what he's gonna do with the money. And I said, well, it's his money. <laughs> Whatever the fuck he wants with us, how things work. You know? <laughs> like, can you imagine you're in a grocery store buying a Chef Boyardee <laughs> fucking can of spaghetti or something, and you see your boss, you're like, <laughs> like, what do you got over there, Peterson? <laughs> you paying that with that money I give you? <laughs>
That's the way it works. If I were, they want to save money. But he said, my, my mother said, you don't know, he might buy crack with it. I'm like, of course he's going to buy crack with it. Because she would go, let's make him a sandwich. I don't know if you've ever given a sandwich to a homeless guy. <laughs> They're not that grateful. <laughs> like, ah, it's a sandwich. That'll change my life a lot. <laughs> like they're lying, uh, fucking horizontally on cement, but now they got a sandwich on their belly. <laughs> well, thanks, Bob. You helped me a lot. <laughs> Doesn't change their existence one moment. However, crack. <laughs> Because whereas a sandwich can do nothing for you, crack can make those guys feel like us. You know, suddenly they're on their feet. They're like, fuck this horizontal shit. I walk down the street with you fuckers. What's going on on your magic phone anyway? What's up? Let's keep going. And then it wears off about a block later and you leave them there. But at least for a brief moment, you know, some respite has been uh, shown your fellow human being who, you know, I mean, I'm a Christian, so when I look in the eyes of a homeless person, I know when you see a Christian, you well see a retard nowadays. But... <laughs> Damn, Senator Rizzo. But when I look at a homeless man's eyes, I see eternity. I see an eternal being. And so I can't not give him the same respect that I would you or anyone else, uh, because I feel that we're all eternal beings that may or may not <coughs> fuck it up. <laughs> I believe we're all going to be eternal, it just uh, whether the devil will be raping us for all of eternity. <laughs> but I'm not ever going to be preaching. I'm not one of those guys. You know, I am a Christian, but I hate preaching this more than anything. You know? And all I would say is, you know, I hope you get to heaven, but you, you have to do it through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It must be a joke. I was, <laughs> I was preaching. <laughs> you know, everybody, all my friends, everybody I know is an atheist. And when I was young, you know, everybody was Christian. You know what I mean? Everybody I ever fucking met. You know, it's just what kind of Christian you'd be like. You go, what are you? I go, I'm a Baptist. You go, wait, you're a fucking retard? <laughs> I'm a Presbyterian. He's a Baptist. Man. But uh, nowadays, you know, that's the thing to be, the thing that's stylish. And I kind of believe everything's stylish. You know what I mean? I think that's how we get our opinions. It's the same way you get, like, a, a hat. So sure. <laughs> you go to the hat store, you go, I don't know a fucking thing about hats. What people like? They go, they like this hat. All right, I'll wear that fucking hat. <laughs> so I get my opinions. <laughs> I was talking about something, but I can't remember what it was. Lots of stuff. No, it wasn't the hats. Oh, Jesus of Nazareth? <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth, he tell you shit you can't do, you know? He's like, love your enemy. You know, I can't, can't do it. That's why the fucker's my enemy. Huh? What the fuck are you talking about, Jesus of Nazareth? You can do it, I can't fucking do it. Try to follow the Ten Commandments. Problem with that, some easy, some difficult, you know? Like, thou shalt not kill. Oh, come on, you know? You can get through the day without killing a motherfucker, man. <laughs> One day of your life. But then they'll have ones like, thou shalt not covet. Now covet, I don't know how you stop yourself. That's something, you know, uh, internal. So thou shalt not covet the, thy neighbor's ox. 
Now, first of all, I think that's unfair because a lot of people don't even have neighbors that have oxes. So who knows what they'd do if they were in the situation, but they're never in the scenario, so we don't know. So they get to fucking free pass on that. Now me, I got this fucking scraggly old ox I bought. I should have never buy a used ox, if I can tell you any, if you bring anything out of it tonight, never buy a used ox. So after the guy, after I pay for the fucking ox, of course, I go, anything else I should know about the ox guy? He goes, he has a bursitis. I'm like, what? <laughs> Your, my ox has bursitis? He goes, yeah, but he's all right, as long as he's not pulling anything, right? <laughs> so I bring my scraggly old ox back home and put him in a grass. I might have killed something, you know? So I got my scraggly old ox in my garage. Now, I leave, and I walk down to the 7-Eleven. Right next door to me is my neighbor, whose garage, garage door is Wide open, what a coincidence. <laughs> and what should be standing in his garage <laughs> but the most beautiful, <laughs> like a half chestnut, like a half steel blue, <laughs> Belgian ox, you know, <laughs> most lustrous looking motherfucker, <laughs> and I'm just drooling him. And this guy's like, why, well, you like my ox? I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, I like my ox, I'm alright with my ox. He's like, you can have it if you want, you want my ox? No. Okay, I don't want your ox, alright? But you'd like to have my ox, but yo! No, I don't. But I do want his fucking ox. So I make it hard, you know? Thou shalt not lust after a woman in your heart. I'm like, as long as not my cock, god damn, can I get a pass? I can't get a pass. So I have to look at a woman in a bikini and go, eh. shit down and I really want to get to it. <laughs> the, problem is, the problem is some of it makes no sense. Like it says, big furry dog, right? That's what words are written there. <laughs> and I have a memory of yesterday because I was in the dog park and this big furry dog, I'm sitting on a bench next to this mother, I tell him something about that guy laughs and shit. So I'm like, God damn, I'm gonna say that in Bray this morning. <laughs> yeah, I write that down, so I write down big furry dog instead of whatever the fuck was funny about it. Because <laughs> I thought I would remember it, but I forgot that I'm an old man trying to do a young man's job. <laughs> Wearing an old man's fucking goddamn jacket. <laughs> This is one of these jackets, you know, like Nixon would wear, where the fucking, <laughs> where you put your arms up and the fucking shoulders are like. I like being old, fucking. I don't go, I don't, I don't do no uh, plastic surgery on this shit. Because I want to know. You know, I feel God's giving me clues that I'm gonna die. Like, <laughs> I gotta be kind to me. You know, hey, I give you some uh, white hair. You know that. You, you know I'm talking about, right? The white hair. <laughs> you know, where your hair used to be black and lustrous, and now it's, it's white and dead. <laughs> Just something to think about, you know. <laughs> Make your, uh, we're, gonna make, we're gonna make your flesh just kind of hang off of you. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm so you, you get your, I want to get your affairs in order. <laughs> I don't want to look like a 30 year old and then fucking die. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that? I look great. God's like, what did I told you, you fucking retail <laughs> Down syndrome, I should say. <laughs> 
Mari kita lihat. I got a living will. I don't know if you know what that is. I, you know, because some things I want, like I have plans for my funeral. That was, uh, people said it's a little morbid, but I think it's going to happen, you know. It might not in the future. That's, you know what drives me crazy? I feel like they're going to cure death <laughs> soon, but not soon enough for us. Like, um, to keep reading this shit in the bed. <laughs> What if you were the last generation of dead people? What a fucking drag would that be? It's gonna happen one day. Like a thousand years from now, people are going, remember when people died? No! What? Fuck off, Frank. No! It's not just me and Jimmy told me. Yeah, people are dead. Who are they fucking around? Yeah, yeah. All I want it's where when I have a funeral, I don't want people, you know when people go to the funeral, oh, I'm so sad, I'm so sad. So that's what I want. I don't want people fucking having a party. That's a new, that's a stylish now. Everybody fucking having a party. I'm like, hey, whoa! How about me? I'm dead over here in the fucking corner. You nice to have some fucking, you know. What the fuck are you sad? What? I feel like you've kind of wasted your life if no one is sad at your funeral. <laughs> I want everybody to be sad. I feel I would have really made a difference if at least one person was couldn't go on any longer. <laughs> Take their own life. <laughs> I go, God damn, I really did uh, have some meaning in this world. And I thought about what I'm going to put on my, you know, I have plans. Like when I die, I'd like to be, I think everyone's like this, I'd like to be surrounded by my loved ones, and I've told them all uh, this, I, I've said, I would like you guys, when I die, to just kind of surround me and bring me back to life, whatever the fuck. <laughs> just try anything, anything in your head, I don't care at this point. Because who knows, it might work, you know. Because nobody ever tries once he goes, hey, yeah, he's dead. You know, why don't you just jump on his chest or kick him in the jar or something? I don't know. <laughs> Try something, can you? Try something. Man, I got this living will. Now, what a living will is, it tells you, it tells the doctor and your family what should happen should you be in a position where you're, uh, like they call it a vegetable. I don't like that really that much. I don't know where they chose that word, because I like eating vegetables, you know? But if you become a vegetable, like if you get, mostly what the living will is about is uh, whether or not they should unplug you. Now, it's hard to imagine right now, sitting here, that one day you'll be plugged into the wall. <laughs> but that will happen to some of us. You know, just statistically. Probably three of you motherfuckers will be plugged into the wall one day. That'd be a bad piece of news to get from your doctor, wouldn't it? I was thinking about this. Doctor can't give you good news. Not really, not actually good, you know. Like a doctor will never come back. We got a whole of uh, your blood panels came back yesterday, uh, Norm, and good news, you're immortal. <laughs> you don't have to come back here no more, I'll tell you. That. <laughs> Best thing you can do is go, your blood panels came back, and nothing at all is wrong yet. <laughs> but I want you to keep coming back every six months or so, because one day I will tell you something that will shatter your mind. <laughs> You'll be crying and shit, begging. Begging me, like I can do something. I've seen it. Uh, this morning. So. They become cold, those doctors. But anyways, that would be a bad piece of news to get from your doctor, right? You go in, how did it turn out, doc? Well, you're, uh, you know, you're 
the statins they're working and your cholesterol's <laughs> down and everything. Uh, oh, but we will be having to plug you into a wall. <laughs> What? Yeah. Yeah, just go into that next uh, door and we'll plug you into the wall and you'll lie there forever. Uh, so then you're lying there. So the reason, because you're in a coma, you know, and shit, and you're plugged in, you know. And so I have in my living will very specific instructions. Whatever happens, do not touch that fucking plug. <laughs> The plug stays where it is. <laughs> because now you don't give a fuck about plugs. Yeah, plug, what the fuck's a plug? I'll buy another plug. But at this point, that plug is everything. <laughs> I'm not even gonna have one plug. I'm, I'm gonna have a series of plugs. Because <laughs> I don't want one of them janitors with a big wide room hitting that plug. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> Brothers slipping him a 20 in the fucking hall. Because that's the problem. You don't make up your mind, your family will make up your mind. Now, my mother said to me, she said, Norm, come on. She said, You don't want to be a burden to your family? I was like, You couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry if, uh, you know, you have to take fucking five minutes out of your bridge game every Wednesday. <laughs> Touch my fucking palm. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm such a goddamn burden. <laughs> and then they'll start, if, if you don't have the living will, they ask the, the people, you know, your family. And I wonder what they're going to answer. The doctor goes, Any of you ever remember Norm saying anything about what he'd like? <laughs> and my brother goes, Hey, wait a second. Now you mentioned, hold on, hold on. You mean about the plug? <laughs> yes. Now that you mentioned, I remember I was having lunch with him one time, and he said, if it ever happened, something like that, that, that we should, that we should. Uh, yeah. I remember that. And my mother's like, yeah, he said that to me too. I forgot also. He said kill it. Yeah, he said that. And then we can all get back to our lives, right? Yeah, that's it. And my nightmare is always that I'm in, but I can hear everything, but I can't move. That's my, always my fear. So I'm hearing all this shit going, I but I can't. Trying to blink one eye or something. <laughs> I think that if the person is not left a living will, you have to imagine, hypothetically, what that person would say that's in the coma, right? Now, let's suppose that person woke up like five for five minutes, right? And they just wake up, and then the doctor goes, oh, my dad. Well, it says here you're only going to be alive for another uh, one minute. Well, listen, uh, there's a big question we got to ask you. Um, which would you rather we do? Uh, kill you and bury you in the ground, in the dirt? or leave you on the bed with the TV? <laughs> That's a question? Seriously, you're asking me go. How much time do I have left? The bed. Without question, the bed. <laughs> I got fear of the known. That's right. Uh, I was wondering when somebody's asking me, what do you want to put on your graves to some people with the shit on their tombstones, you know? <laughs> and you put anything you want, a, a nice passage from a poem you like or something, or something hopeful, or some brag about all the shit you did. <laughs> <laughs> or a, a joke. That was the thing, a comedian. Oh, you probably put a joke on yours. And I'm like, nah, nah, I would never do that on account of people get sick of the same fucking joke. <laughs> They're gonna stop coming, it's in. <laughs> you know, they'll be dead, they come, ah, fucking guys. Get some new material for that. Have to read this fucking joke again. 
so this is what I'm going to do if I'm able to afford it or as long as I can afford it. I'm going to have a big, instead of a gravestone, a, well, I'll have a gravestone, but on top of the gravestone will be a big, big neon light yep. flashing yep. for eternity, as long as I can maintain the electricity bill. <laughs> and all it'll say is, be sad now. Be sad now. I need mean to be, because, you know, life is more than death. I mean, <laughs> it makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> death is the only thing that's not life. <sighs> I gotta look at this shit again. Because I don't want because I'll just keep going on about death forever. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about it because I quit drinking, you know, years and years ago. And I was never, wasn't an alcoholic, people would never believe that, but I drank for like two years straight and then I just quit and I never had no fucking nothing. Because I, I didn't get the gene, I guess, or something. But when you don't drink, oddly enough, people think you're an alcoholic. Like you go to a party, hey, let me get you a drink. Oh, I don't drink. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> How long have you been sober? I'm like, yeah, I'm not an alcoholic. No, no. <laughs> like, all right, I'll drink. Give me a fucking drink. <laughs> I'll get drunk out of my fucking mind to prove to you cocksuckers <laughs> that I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> That's what it takes. <laughs> it used to be tough on the road. At home, you know, it was tough, but at home at least I knew if I was in a bar I could get home somehow. You know, I don't drive, but I get a cab, find a cab, that was my goal. And the thing that would knock me out of was those shooters, because they're, I don't know if they, even know if they have them anymore, but they're little, they taste like candy, you know? And it's like nothing, it's like, what the fuck, it's nothing. And then uh, fucking 20 minutes later, like, ah! <laughs> but when you're drinking, it's like a little, a little tiniest glass of candy you can imagine. <laughs> And they, they used to have all sex names. I don't know if they do it anymore nowadays, but be like Dirty Whore or, you know, <laughs> else. some blowjob. I don't know why they had to name them like that. I think it was just so people could sexually harass waitresses, you know. Oh, yes, I'd like you. What would I like? I'll tell you what. A blowjob. That's what I like. I'd like you to give me a blowjob. <laughs> And this is my friend Terry. I want you to give him two blowjobs. <laughs> it's like I only make eight dollars an hour. <laughs> Sad shit. And then I think sometimes they would have romantic names too, you know? Like I remember one drink was called Sex on a Beach. You know, and I always thought, well, that's a subliminal thing that you hear about on the TV or in the big, thick books, you know? <laughs> subliminal. And uh, what it means is, it's about the subconscious, I like shit. <laughs> and uh, so I think what, because it, it was called Sex on a Beach, so in your tree, you're drunk anyway, you know, so you're not thinking, right? So you go, hey, if maybe if I order that, that will happen to me. <laughs> Sex on a Beach. When does a night of drinking ever end up with making love on a beach? You know? Now, you don't want the real shit that happens after you're fucking drunk. You don't want the, you know, I don't want to go that far, you know? Where you go to the uh, shooter bar. Yeah, excuse me, can I have, uh, give me a uh, having sex with a dude? I swear to God, I thought it was a lady. <laughs> and, uh, my friend will have a, uh, what is he like? Oh yeah, he'll have a senseless knife fight. <laughs> Don't get all stingy on the vibe, it was a little, a little senseless. <laughs> but I get all drunk, but the road was the worst, man, because the road, first of all, you got to, when you do stand-up comedy on the road, you got to get up at like, super early so you can go do radio, uh, you know, at six o'clock in the morning you're on a radio station with people trying to get them to go see your show 
14 hours later. <laughs> so uh, you gotta get up early, so it's hard when you've been drinking all night and shit, you know? And I remember I get home uh, to after one night and shit, I go, excuse me, can I get a wake up call please? For six o'clock. <laughs> oh, it's five to six? <laughs> Okay, then, well, I better let you go. You'll be dialing soon, I guess, huh? <laughs> I don't have much time left, and I don't want to fuck it all up again. <laughs> so I'm going to look at it, and I'll find a really good job. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, but I did hear a joke, like a street joke, that was really funny. You know, it's not mine, but I got told it to me. But it's funnier than anything I got fucking on. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you this thing. I've never said this, but it's so fucking funny that you guys will laugh like crazy. <laughs> it's like I'm a hypnotist putting it in. <laughs> No, but my, my friend, uh, this is the sad part, but he's obese, and, and uh, uh, I went to school with him. I, I have five friends that we've remained friends. I'm blessed to have the same five friends from grade school that we've all stayed the best friends. But anyways, one of them, Barney, 587 pounds. I swear to God, he's 587 pounds, and he's tried before to lose weight and shit on But now he's super committed to losing weight and we're all behind him, I'm 100% behind him, and I want, I'm not 100%, I shouldn't say I'm 100%, because a little tiny bit of me wants him to gain 13 pounds. <laughs> Why not get on the TV if you can, right? But here's what he said to me that struck me out. He said to me, he said, Norm, you wouldn't believe it, you know, but look at me now. But he said, you know that one time I was 135 pounds? And I said, yes, I do know that. I know that you've been every weight <laughs> up to 587 pounds. I, I know you didn't just show up looking like that. <laughs> so there is a... But I'm going to tell you a joke that a guy told me that's funnier than all my shit. That's how sad it is. But it concerns a Mexican gentleman who owns a bookstore, you know? And uh, he's got his little modest bookstore. And, uh, and uh, who should walk in but a guy? And, uh, and the guy says, uh, hey, you got Donald Trump's uh, book in here? And the guy goes, you know I'm Mexican, right? And, yeah, whatever. He goes, you got Donald Trump's book in here. And he goes, how dare you ask me such a question? He goes, I just want Donald Trump's book. You fucking hard of hearing or something? You fucking wetback? <laughs> and the fucking Mexican guy goes, listen. Listen, you cocksucker. You fucking leave here right now, and I never want to see you back here again. He says, yeah, that's the name of it. Is it in Alright guys, God bless you. Yeah,